Big day in Atlanta as we celebrate Martin Luther King's birthday and his fight for justice and equality. It's an important day for our city and our nation. With that as the backdrop, we are in the middle of another political flare-up with many black leaders and Democrats again calling President Trump a racist. Tonight, the president is telling reporters he's the least racist person they've ever interviewed. The allegations are the president used harsh language when referring to Haiti and some African countries, all of this during a closed-door meeting, which was about immigration last week. And today, we heard more from Republican Georgia Senator David Perdue, who was in that meeting on ABC's This Week. Are you saying the president did not use the word that has been so widely reported? I'm telling you he did not use that word, George, and I'm telling you it's a gross misrepresentation. How many times do you want me to say that? Now, that's tougher language from Purdue, who released a statement on Friday saying he did not recall the president making those comments. Today, Purdue characterized last week's meeting as a constructive discussion on a Democratic proposal with both parties wanting to solve the immigration issue. Now, Democratic Congressman John Lewis, who is not a fan of the president, was also asked about the controversy on ABC's This Week. Do you think President Trump is a racist? I think he is a racist. How do you explain it and what do we do about it? We have to stand up, we have to speak up, and not try to sweep it under the rug. Congressman Lewis went on to say he would support a motion to censure the president and once again will not be attending the president's State of the Union. Former Ambassador Andrew Young also weighed in on the issue on Meet the Press, where he was asked how to respond to claims the president is racist and how to educate him on the issue. It's not a matter of educating Donald Trump. It's a matter of educating our entire society. Getting President Trump to be a saint is not going to change the employment situation. It's not going to change the global economy. This is a difficult world, and it doesn't help to label people. You know, you don't, call, you don't help someone who has an alcohol problem by constantly calling them a drunk. You have to deal with the sickness. A member of the president's own religious council also talked about the issue during a sermon today in Gainesville. I don't agree with what the president said about certain countries and how that, I'm not going to repeat his words, but that they are, God loves and God sees greatness. In, and when we get to heaven, there's going to be people of every kindred and of every tongue and of every nation. So here we are again tonight talking about the president's alleged language and it's driving the national news cycle again. Folks, we've been down this road before, both before and after the 2016 election, so I don't know if anyone should be surprised about how all of this is playing out. But today the president said something else on Twitter that we should also be paying attention to, and it's directly related to the closed-door meeting that started all of this. Here's the tweet. DACA is probably dead. This is a big deal, folks, because last week we were talking about a deal, a way to figure out how to keep in this country 800,000 people who were brought into the United States illegally when they were just children, children who have grown up in the United States. Now, last week, the president held an open meeting with Democrats and Republicans. It looked like both sides were coming together, working together, negotiating, compromising, and figuring out a way to come up with a solution for 800,000 human beings. The Republicans want border security. The Democrats want to keep the DACA children in America. Now, neither side can get everything they want. Nobody does in a negotiation. That's how it works. Both sides have to give some to get some. And there are 800,000 reasons for both sides to compromise. And if DACA is dead tonight, that blood is on the hands of those politicians who were unwilling to compromise.